Hey everybody and welcome to another JASP video. In this video, we're going to continue our Learn Stats. Look at that, Learn Stats series. So there are eight Learn Stats modules and we have gone, or actually, sorry, there are more than eight. There are 10 Learn Stats modules and we have gone through six of them. So we are going to be continuing this series today with p-values yep this video is all about p-values so let's go ahead and open that up look at it. it's a p-value no i'm just kidding there is no p-values here yet so let's go through let's go through each of these options and we'll take a look at what happens in this results window so i've been making videos based on 0 0.18.1 if we go back over to here and just hit close don't save it will take us back eventually to the main screen here so uh this is my intel mac as opposed to my silicon mac um so that's the one we are using for our exploration today. So let's go back. Let's learn base. Uh, let's go back to p-values. All right. Let's take a look at this. Okay. So when you open up, you've got four option windows here. The first two are open and ready to go. Although this one technically isn't a collapsible menu, but these the rest are a collapsible menu here. So we have our theoretical distribution, and so you can make it normal or a t distribution. Uh, they'll look relatively the same because t distributions are are normal. We can plot the theoretical distribution, highlighting the critical region. This is useful for learning and teaching stats. I probably should have used this the other day with my students and then highlight specific test statistics. So are we going to specify the test statistic as a Z or a T or are we going to specify a P value? So we can do that as well. And then our test settings here, we've got type one error rate alpha. So by default, it is at the conventional probably most widely used value these days of 0.05 or 5%. And it is represented here in orange on the graph. And then alternative hypothesis, we can do two sided or we can do uh, one or the other one sided test. So greater would probably be over here and then less would be probably over here. OK, so then we can do simulation under the null hypothesis, number of studies to stimulate as one. So that's the first part. And then we can do some additional simulations with the alternative hypothesis and options, although the introductory text is not available at this time. Again, this module is beta. It is able to be used at this point as a teaching tool, but not everything is there. So one of the things to note about the p-value uh, module, if you are doing using it now, is that it the introductory test is not available. So what you need to do is explain it with words or have your own uh, text ready to go for describing each of these things. Now, as far as a learning tool is concerned, not having an introductory text is kind of a bummer at the time. But, you know, I'm recording this on November 20th. So more things to come, I'm sure, as they get these modules ready to go. I mean, this module, Learn Stats, is just so good right now. OK, so let's take a look. Uh, we'll go through the uh, just the normal situation right here. We're going to highlight our critical region, of course. And since we're doing a two sided or two tailed test, it is taking our 0.05 and shoving uh, two and a half percent into each of our tails, which is how this works. And now you can use so normal distribution is going to be using Z. And if we change this to T, it would be down here as well. So 0.025 is just about two standard deviations away from the mean. Bonus points for those of you who get it in the comments. Drop your comments as to what the actual value is. Pause it now. Drop your comments. OK, I think they're paused, everyone. <laughs> everyone else, if you're not sure what that value is, it's nay, it's plus or minus 1.96. You can kind of see. I think this one is a little bit easier to see. There's the two. It's going boop, 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 right there. So 1.96. That's the value. And if you're ever wondering what is going on, then that is what uh, uh, that is what I'm going to be referring to, right? So these values are definitely critical regions because we know the values of probabilities underneath this curve via calculus, you know, right, doing integrals and things like that. If we change this to greater and highlighted that, this value here would be positive 1.64. And if we did less, it would be negative 1.64. So those are just values to remember regarding critical regions under the mean. I, I, I think it's very interesting that they've put negative four to positive four here when it would probably be easier if this was just we've had an, we have a negative three with every one to positive three because that's the vast majority of of possible values under this curve. So I don't know. Let's go back to two sided and let's highlight a specific test statistic. OK, so if we are saying that our alpha, so the the decision to make or break our null hypothesis is 0.05 and our Z is one, then the probability, so the p-value of getting a uh, anything in the blue region color coded here, right, because our Z is one, is going to be 0.317, which is which is not bad, right? Not good. We're not going to be able to reject our null hypothesis. But let's say we got a 1.97. Let's put that in there. Oh, look at that. 2.4%. So our p-value is 0.049. And that's because I know that 1.96 is 
the critical value for Z. So if I were to get like a critical value, uh, a Z of 3.97, that's what I meant to do. It is off the charts over here. So you don't even see any blue because our Z is 3.97. The probability of getting a 3.97 on this particular normal curve is less than 0 0.001. And I love it how they actually decided to do this as an app because you set in your preferences how you want p-values to display. And by default, it does the rounding and the less than. So once you get past 0 0.001, you know you have a really small probability. This is in a very extreme value when we assume that the null hypothesis is true. So this is great, actually. This is great. So this first theoretical distribution applies to um, Zs. So let's do it for, oh, actually, let's specify p-values instead of Zs in this case. So let's specify a p-value of 0 0.001. How about that? Let's specify that. And again, it's not going to be a lot of blue over here, right? It's actually showing zero instead of 0 0.001. That Z value is 3.29. So you can specify a P value on this graph and it'll give you the exact Z for that, which I think is really cool too, which is another way to you know, solve for Z when you know the probability, which is pretty cool. Solve for Z knowing the probability. Okay, let's just switch this to T distributions. Let's uncheck that for now, right? So it looks pretty much the same. It looks pretty much the same. However, it is not 1.96. It's like plus or minus 2.04, I think, something like that. Um, we can actually ask, we can specify the, uh, let's specify the test statistic. I think it's 2.04. It's been a while since I've worked with T critical values. 2.04, that's the test statistic. Yes, it's 2.04. Perfect. <laughs> I have solved it. Yeah. So it's slightly different from Z. They're still based on normal distributions, but they're slightly different. So, um, and if we went to a greater than, um, it is. 5% is, was it 1.65? Is it still 1.65? Let's see what we got here. Uh, no, not quite. Is it uh, 1.54? Hmm, just doing, trying to, trying to solve that. No, it's too, that's too far. Actually, I went the wrong way. 1.75. Okay, went a little too hard. 1.69. Nice. All right, this is 1.67, I think, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Let's, let's put that in there. Is it? Is it? No, I still didn't get it. It is probably 1.65. <laughs> oh, good stuff. Okay. Well, even if that's the case, where, there we go. All right. Let's, let's specify. Let's, let's figure it out, right? Let's do 0.05. Uh, 1. 1.697. Oh, I went the wrong way the, the, when I got to 1.69. I went the wrong way. I, I got it. I got it now. Right, there we go. So we figured it out. 1.697 or 1.70. Again, slightly different from Z. Okay. So that's what you can do to show what happens to critical values. I love it. You can also simulate under the null hypothesis or the alternative hypothesis. So let's take a look here. Let's go back to, um, and then T distributions at degrees of freedom 30. That's why those values are the same. So you can specify your degrees of freedom. You can call this 100 as well, because this will change for sure. Um, yeah. So T changes when the degrees of freedom change. So let's go back to normal distribution so we don't have to worry about that too much. 1.64, 1.65, 1.64. There you go. Uh, all right. So let's simulate under the null hypothesis. Um, and what we want to do is we want to get our plot statistics and we want to overlay our theoretical. This opens up a new graph, which is great. So again, HO, if you're not familiar, is the null hypothesis. We're going to plot our p-values and we're going to highlight our critical regions. Okay. New plot. Okay. And let's go ahead and get our frequency table. And then let's simulate... 10 studies and we are going to hit the simulate button and it's going to work and there you go let's see what we got here we got one uh statistically significant result but we got 10 not non-significant results right so only one of our p-values so this orange line by the way is for our alpha okay so we could do that so we can plot to see if we did this study and we assume that null hypothesis is correct or is true we assume that it's true we're making an assumption then how many times are we going to reject that null hypothesis so that's how you would do that. But you can also simulate under the alternative hypothesis. If you are saying your mean is 2.54, how about that? We're going to simulate 10 studies, okay? And we're going to plot our test statistics, plot our p-values, plot our frequency tables, um, overlay the theoretical distributions, and highlight that critical region. Let's see what happens, okay? So we have, there we go. We have simulation under HA, and JASP uses A for alternative, not one, that you'll see in a lot of American uh, text, statistics textbooks. So if we simulate a mean of 2.54 10 times, what, how many uh, times are we going to get a, uh, a statistically significant result? And the interesting thing is, is that we got nine versus one in this 10 times. I love it. It resampled for the uh, separate simulation and none of them, none of them were statistically significant. So we got nine and one. And so here's the nine and here's the one. And then we have our test statistic as Z, right? So a mean of 2.54 over here. Okay. So our null distribution is right here and our uh, alternative distribution is right here. So as we, as we learned up here, right? So if, even if we were doing a T test, 2.54 is going to be beyond our critical value, right? Of even, of even 1.96. So this value here again is, is, in the distribution, okay? 
that you're working with, right? So it's a test statistic of 2.54, okay? So just be aware of that. So if you change it up to T here, what does 2.54 become now? It becomes your uh, average T, right? So these are sampling distributions. So how often are in 10 times are you gonna get a T of 2.54? How often are you gonna get a Z of 2.54? So that's the idea with these sampling distributions. Okay, <clears throat> I'll show you what that looks like with T. How about that? So T at DF100, non-centrality. So instead of... <clears throat> Instead of uh, the mean of Z, we're doing a non-centrality point. So I'm going to do 2.54 just for same Z's purposes. Okay, so here we are. We're going to do this. And there you go. Again, here is the null of T distribution at 100 degrees of freedom. Okay, so we have 101, uh, an N of 101 because it's a one sample T test. Okay, and our alternate distribution is right here. And so how many times? Well, five and five. How many times? So our probably our critical T is somewhere around here. Okay, some basically right here because we've got five. And so these five, so this is our critical T right here. And these are the blue ones that don't appear in our alternative distribution. We want more of them to be over here, right? Non-centrality of 2.54 right there. So we want these to be as far apart as possible when we are simulating. And so we might, <laughs> this one's funny, out of 10, we might, and we might not reject the null hypothesis with, with p-values. So this is, this is how p-values work. This is how the p-value module works in the learn stats. So I hope you learned a little bit about where our p's and t's and z's and all sorts of rhyming letters come from. This is an interesting little uh, module. I think it might help with uh, simulating how p-values are used in uh, stats and using the correct definition that the p-value is an extreme value when the null hypothesis is assumed to be true. Okay, that's the correct definition. No other definitions are correct. And that's going to do it for this episode. Please leave your comments, suggestions, questions, and other feedback down below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.